So you're telling me that a power ladder was an option in the 80s for this machine. That's incredible. You're about to see an R7 Gleaner Combine working, harvesting beans here in, uh, well, they're West Central Missouri. So R7 Gleaner Combine, harvesting beans over here in Western Missouri. And uh, it's cool to see old machinery like this still going. Well, what can you tell me about this R7? Uh, it, it's Anything special about it? Well, it's the eighth one off the line, so... I mean, that's yeah. kind of special. Yeah, it's one of the first ones, so it's, uh, you know... Uh, so I know you got some other cool and unique Alice Chalmers equipment here, and hopefully at some point we're going to get to see it, but... Yeah. I don't want to hold up Harvest too much, so... All right, so I know you're saying that this has only been made for one year, but just comparing it like the, the Alice F-Series that we ran up by our farm for grass seed, Massively different, obviously a massively larger machine as well. Like, do you know the differences between them? Well, it's a rotary instead of uh, conventional. Okay. In the F, that was the smallest, you know, one of the smaller conventional that you made. So, uh, What's the difference between conventional and a rotor? Rotor has, well, the cleaner rotor is transverse. You know, John Deere and everybody else nowadays is natural, so it's a front length machine. Yeah. Uh, the ro cleaner rotary run the width of the machine. Okay. like the old cylinder on, on an F or something. But, uh, and that rotor, that does the threshing and separating. The, the That's F, F would have that cylinder and it threshes everything and then it goes on the straw walker to separate. Separates uh, the grain out? Yeah, the, okay. the straw and the grain out. So, uh, you guys I mean, are... When the N series came out, I mean, they doubled the capacity. Yeah. Now, did you guys, you guys bought this one new? No, I, I bought this in 2016. I, okay. I've been looking for one. And, and it's four wheel drive? Yeah. So, oh. Uh, got the common fifth owner of it. Came, came from uh, Brown Newton, Kansas, and the guy, he, he owned the three original, you know, other owners. So. Gotcha. I take care of it as best as I can because I'm going to run it a few more years. It, it's not going to leave the place and it's not going to come south, so I'll, I'll say that. Okay, good. Uh, I said, I'm amazed at how good a shape it's in. Well, it's just, just kind of a lucky deal that there was a guy that was going to buy it and he, he had some other troubles and kind of fixed some other things. And yeah. So he wasn't able to buy it. And I just, Yeah, I say I saw. Uh, what was it? I think the R50. The R50 has a Deutz engine, right? It's got the Deutz there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they they were going to probably have 426 in that. They were going to call that the N, the N4. Yeah. And uh, it was probably going to have 426 in it, but it didn't it, 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 I mean, Deutz bought out Alice. What's this got? It's got the 516 block Alice. Oh, okay. So it's the same as an N5. No, this got big motor. This got 516. Uh, I thought N5 would have 4.6 for that 8030 pass. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> except it'd be turbocharged and it'd yeah. be on N5. Yeah. And okay. Uh, yeah, this was the biggest compound they made it. I mean, out of everybody. 310 motor train pen, 270 engine horsepower. I mean, it, it's big. Yeah, I mean, it's. I didn't realize how big it was either until I just seen it. And I like how the platform comes out for all your lights. Yeah. I mean, it, that seems like a better design. Well, it, it really helps shape the sun out. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's yeah, a good point, that's, too. Because 
it goes all the way around on the side. I, you know, the cab's not as nice as the new one, but shading, you know, mid-September, I mean, it's oh, like, yeah, even imagine. July, I mean, it's they, I got that thing, the air conditioner on, it working so good now, I can't even turn that one on the fan. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time and stopping to talk with me, and hopefully you don't mind that I do some more recording while you're running. <laughs> Outfitted with Ag Leader, I mean, really bringing an 86 into uh, into the future. So now, does it auto steer or no? No, I no. no okay. I'm not. Realize it? Okay. So that, that's pretty cool. So it's all in one switch, essentially. Yeah. I would love to get you guys some good drone video of this operating. However, it's not gonna happen. I don't know if you can hear it in the mic and I hope you can't, but it is very windy. Too windy to be flying the drone and too big of a risk. So we will not be doing that today. However, pretty cool to see a machine like that, a rarer machine that was only made one year. I know it's not a pure Alice Chalmers machine that was produced after uh, oh, uh, Deutz had taken over the Alice Chalmers facilities, but still really neat. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, 8095. All right, so right here, Ethan's dad came over here to show me this 8010. They put a 426 in the 8010, and he was telling me, I, I just figured I'd get it on camera so you guys could hear it and kind of understand it too. So what all, the only thing you had to change was the starter? The only thing changed on it was the starter goes on to a different side because of the motor and the straight radiator shroud had to be lowered just a little bit. And other than that, she just- Everything else just fits in perfect. Fits right in. It came out of a, the motor came out of a 8050 is what the motor came out okay. of. And it had the same injector pump on it and everything. That's awesome. So what can you tell me about this R50? What, I, I know that it's a low number, but. It's, uh, this machine went through a lot of, lot of repairs because the company and I was working together at the same time. And if I broke down, it happened to be here we had mud, didn't have a real wheel assist under it then. Yeah. And I could run about one day a week, and every time I run, it broke down that night. I'd call them up the next day, and they'd be here to fix it. So, originally, whenever I guess in development. Yeah, it was in development. It was just two wheel drive time. at the time. It was in development at the time with two wheel drive, huh. and I so had a guy that Brown Equipment was down at Holden, and he worked. He did, at one time it had an Alice Chalmers dealership and they lost lost it and or went out of business, I'll put it. So he went to working for Gilcrest and he he knew I bought this machine. He knew me because I'd done bought stuff from him when when he was in business. Yeah. And Gilcrest that's a Gilcrest rear wheel assist on it. Okay, so they so it wasn't altered by Alice Chalmers. Uh -uh. That that was altered after the fact and yeah, just by that you was and done after. Okay. And so do you know if, so the other R50s that were produced, do you know if any of them had rear wheel assist? No. None? Okay. None of them had any rear wheel assist. We couldn't get them to put it on for them, of huh. course. And I was the only guy that had the trouble. That I had a, one legal page, troubles, oh. full. It, everything on it, you name it, it, it happened. <laughs> when the hydraulic control valve stuck, and that's made by Cessna. And we well, think it, you think an aircraft would be relatively that's <laughs> what I would have thought too <laughs> relatively uh reliable. I thought but. so too, but it didn't, it didn't make it. And the throat on it broke, the shoe pans in here broke a couple of times. They had to replace all that. They even ended up replacing working on the motor. So now, and the that, engine on this one is an air, engine. yeah, so it's air cooled, it's air -cooled. In 40 hours valve covers came off of it 
They had seven of them motors. All seven motors had the same problem. Bolts wasn't torqued properly. And that motor come out of Germany that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, do it so. And I had, when, when the motor did give me trouble, the engineer was riding with me at the time. Well, that's good. So at least they could see, like, well, he wasn't abusing it. I and mean, that was, was on a Friday. Saturday morning, I went to a sale to buy an old truck. Come back that night, the combine was running. They had them, they, they had brought them out. They flew a man in here from St. Louis. They brought a motor in if they needed it. Everything they needed, they, they, had, they had it running. So it sounds like you don't want to be on the research and development team if you want weekends off. If you, <laughs> it's, of course, it had to be the weather. Yeah. It would rain, and it was raining the day it broke down. Gotcha. Okay, so the, I mean, I guess at least when it broke down, you really it couldn't was, do much. It was down. Anyway. You couldn't run. Yeah. So then it, it, every time it broke down, you could bet it rained that night. And, and Say that one more time. <laughs> uh, the advertisement they put out on this combine yeah. with pictures was taken on it in February cutting soybeans. Oh. And it was in the mud then, too. I didn't have a rear wheel assist under it then, but I got it under it that year. Did they at least give you a copy of the photo? Mm -hmm. Did they oh, give I you? Got, I've got the advertisement. That's cool. It was in the advertisement. And me and all the all the guys that were involved in advertised on the on that advertisement all the time. And there's quite a few people called me up asking about what about the machine, and I had no problem with it. The fact is, we were experimenting. And, yeah, I mean, things are going to go wrong. It's new. And new, and some of this stuff is going wrong. ain't supposed to happen. Yeah. And and the guys, that I my cornhead never gave me any trouble. But one of the guys in Illinois, his cornhead broke the auger across the shaft, across huh. the feeding house. I mean, it's part of research and development, I guess. And stuff, so. So with the air-cooled diesel, how many horsepower was it supposed to have? So it's around 150. 150, okay. And then I'm guessing it didn't overheat then? No, no overheating issues? That's the reason it had to go through the motor. It was because Because the motor filled up with oil. Oh, And then okay. it, that caused it to overheat. Gotcha. Okay, well, I mean. And that had but to uh, So after they fixed that, since then, you I mean, no issues no, with that? I've had no issues after they got everything fixed. I never had no issues. Other than so this is an 8095. So Alice only made four of them, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's got the engine. Yeah. I don't think this is a Cummins. I think this is a Komatsu. It's, I right? think it's a Komatsu. Right yeah. But either way, so so it came from the factory. It would have came with this Komatsu engine. Yeah. And they were 260 horsepower, roughly, I think. 230. 230, is okay. Is what he's got turning on them. Okay. It's both of them turn about 220, 230. All right. But either way, so yeah. and that so that I guess I should specify too. So that's PTO horsepower, not mm -hmm. engine. Okay. Yep. So then roughly the engine I guess would be somewhere around that two sixty yep. time. So either way, for an eighty six or even a, I guess this would have been done in what eighty four ish. Eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah, this would be this was the last some of the last stuff they manufactured. Okay, but this would have been by far the most powerful Mm -hmm. non-articulating four-wheel drive tractor of the time, right? Yep. That is incredible. And everything else is just yeah, the cab factory. Is all the same. Holy smokes, that cap that thing looks beautiful. The only, the only difference in it is, is the length of the frame. Yeah, between the two series. So uh, they've, they've lengthened it, which lengthened the frame out and I guess they just did it with bolts. Some place, so they had to put extra so they just put, they bolted these sheet, it's the... welded on. Oh, welded, okay. I guess it would be stronger than bolts anyways, because that could be your it's next problem. Here it's all welded back there, it's bolted. Okay, that way you could still split the tractor, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you could still split it back here. But. Yeah. That's a lot of engine, though. Do you know what size this thing is? No, I don't know. I mean, it looks quite a bit bigger than the 426. Oh, yeah. And then this swings open, too, don't it? Yeah. Somehow. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how either. We better leave it alone. I don't want to break it. <laughs> I can't afford to buy one. <laughs> I don't know what he's got tied up in this thing. Yeah. Well, either way. So, Charles was really awesome showing us around, showing us that 8095 and the R50. 
do plan on making a trip back to see the, the 8095s, hopefully working in the springtime. Just didn't work out this time to see it. But I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Charles, I greatly appreciate you uh, showing me around, and I greatly appreciate Ethan taking me for a ride and showing me that combine as well. So thank you guys. Yep. Thank you.